My name is Justin Frankel, as, as Jeff introduced me, and uh, my company is Cocos Incorporated, and uh, we are makers of Reaper, which uh, right now is for Windows and uh, will soon be for the Mac. And uh, I'm just going to give you a demo of a lot of things that Reaper does well. I, I only have about 15 minutes, uh, but I'll try to cover uh, some of my favorite things. So uh, Reaper starts up very quickly for a digital audio workstation. Uh, it's sort of one of our big goals with it is just making everything as fast and, and painless as possible. Uh, it supports a wide variety of audio hardware. Right now we're using it with the DigiDesign uh, box that they are uh, providing, I presume. Um, so I'll go ahead and just uh, open up a, a demo project, which uh, is a cover of Song 2 that we were playing around with uh, the other day. So uh, basically play that. Something nice about Reaper is that it doesn't really require you to use any particular format or sample rate for audio. So, for example, if I want to add, uh, oops, I want to add another uh, file to the project. Suppose it's uh, an MP3 that someone sent me. Uh, I can just drag and drop it in here, and it plays. I don't have to worry about what sample rate it's playing. I probably do have to worry about whether or not it goes with my song. But, uh, <laughs> So we support a lot of types like MP3s and AUGs and uh, lossless compressed formats like WavePack and, uh, and FLAC and, uh, and all this stuff just pretty much works and there's no real uh, sitting around worrying about you know, how am I going to convert the sample rate on this or am I going to decompress this first uh, and whatnot. Um, so Reaper is pretty customizable as well. Um, this is the standard Windows theme that, that we uh, sort of ship with, but there's a lot of things that, that come with it as well that are uh, that look different, like here's one that's called the uh, acoustic. Uh, here's another one, uh, a little more futuristic, and this one's called stealth. Uh, we also have things that we can have, like these shadows and stuff, so, you know, because that really makes music sound better. Uh, we, we actually have clinical trials that, that show this. Um, here's another good one. Uh, and this, this customizability extends beyond just appearances, like you can uh, undock the mixer and have it separate and, and that sort of thing. Uh, a nice thing is that you can also set screen sets, so if you have something to use when you're tracking and uh, have a different setup when you're mixing, uh, you can easily switch between this. Uh, so speaking of tracking, I'll go ahead and, and show uh, how Reaper does at tracking, except we don't have power. There we go. Uh, so for example, in this mix, uh, we will play around with uh, adding a, a new guitar part. Um, so, while playing, I can just go ahead and record on the track and set up input monitoring on. Um, yep. So if I want to go ahead and just start recording, I can do that. Uh, and if I, I can just easily punch out, and uh, I'll just go ahead and zoom in here and added the new guitar part as a take. Uh, as a take, and then I can go and switch between takes easily enough. Uh, this theme is not terribly great for this, actually. Um, so there's the there's the new guitar part, and then here would be the original. Um, so you can add as many takes as you need uh, by this route, and, and it, it all just pretty much works. And if you want to do multiple tracks, it's also easy. You can add additional tracks uh, very easily. Uh, and then record on them and choose their input and, uh, via this route. Uh, you can also alias the input names because these names aren't terribly useful. You can assign them to what they're most commonly used for uh, very trivially. Uh, we also have a routing matrix which lets you uh, visualize every track and every input so you can quickly uh, route inputs to different tracks and arm them uh, to, to quickly change your setup and, and not have to worry about going through each one and, and uh, seeing what it sets it. Um, we do some nice things too with uh, with auto punch. So, uh, for example, if you want to just punch in for one particular spot, you can uh, set it to punch in on the loop selection. Uh, and in this case, I'll put the input monitoring on um, on automatic mode, which will only monitor when it's recording rather than when you're playing. So, I'll go ahead and record this. Uh, which 
so it only monitored at the right time, and it works a lot like a tape deck would. Uh, and then in this instance too, uh, since we use this mode, there's actually, it recorded everything before and after the loop selection, it just um, trims it to the, the selection. So if you decide that you didn't uh, punch in and punch out at the right time, you have the data, it's all preserved for you. Um, so I'll move on from that to, uh, well, I should also mention that all this stuff is very dynamic. We can record direct to compressed formats too, uh, if you're recording on, in the field and you have a limited amount of storage. Um, you can also uh, change inputs on the fly. Uh, suppose you decide you want to go through a different preamp or something of that nature. Uh, if you want to change the stereo, you can change the stereo. Uh, all this stuff is just, you can do while playing or while recording and it handles it uh, generally without gaps as well when you switch these inputs. Um, another thing we do, uh, which no one else really does well, is uh, very speed recording. So if, and I'll put it back to the normal mode for this. If I set the playback speed to half speed, we'll hear everything at half speed. And then if I go and uh, record at this speed, So I can actually switch this thing back to uh, right. So now we hear it at normal speed, and then if I reset the play speed back to normal, we get the double speed effect that you might use for uh, recording guitar solos and things of that nature. Uh, which, you know, is something that's been available for a long time, it's just no one really does it now on computers for some reason. Um, so we've already demonstrated the takes as, as lanes here. Uh, I'll go ahead and just show some of the basic editing uh, principles in Reaper. Uh, there are no tools, you just have a mouse cursor uh, and the keyboard. So, for example, I can tab between kick drums here, uh, and if I decide that uh, there's an edit that needs to be made and uh, I haven't prepared well enough to actually have any, uh, I can go and split the, uh, the kick track right here and then uh, I can adjust the position of it, of each item, and if I overlap them, they automatically crossfade with each other. Uh, so the nice thing about this is I can go and quickly edit things uh, and fill in time, I can stretch items, uh, all of this sort of thing, uh, pretty much without having to go click anywhere, or remember what state the program's in. It's all just uh, clicking on things and, and tweaking their parameters, uh, and so forth. Um, we can also uh, zoom in and do sample level edits on, on items. So if uh, there's a click or something you need to remove, uh, an easy way is just go split on it and then you have these two crossfades which then uh, fade it out and back in. Uh, and if you need to use an external editor, we support any number of external editors. So you can use SoundForge or WaveLab, uh, whatever, you, whatever you really prefer. Um, Another nice thing, uh, if you have, say, a distance of drums and you want to remove a section of time, uh, it's, e it's very easy to, uh, to preview what it would sound like before you remove it. I just used a, a modifier uh, when starting playback. And it, it skips it. And then if I decide that I have one I like, I can just uh, remove the contents and that it's done. So it's very easy to, to do big edits across a lot of tracks uh, using that technique. We also support uh, ripple editing, so if you're editing content that's dependent, uh, that has a lot of edits later, you can go and have it automatically uh, move things, which I'll demonstrate here. So for example, if I move this, it moves all, all items that are after that, including the regions and automation and things of that nature. How does it do that without going to a toolbox? <laughs> well, there's, you know, there's modes for, for editing like that, but there's no like scissor tool or erase tool or, and you something on the keyboard with you? Um, I, I flipped on a, a, well, we should probably keep this for after, but I, I clicked on a button up, on, up in the toolbar, and there's also hotkeys 